Well, good morning. I'm home, you can see. I always hover over me. Everybody else is outside. Enjoying themselves, except him. Uh, I had a little trouble on the road. Uh, I had a flat tire. And the guy came after about two hours of waiting for AAA, which that wasn't bad. It was the middle of the night. He showed up without a jack to lift it and without a ranch to take the lug nuts off. So basically, he was useless. But then he took, loaded me up on the car carrier and took me all the way to Kansas, and I'm in Oklahoma. 127. See, that wasn't bad look. <laughs> I look at you so glad to be home. You don't believe me. Uh, he took me, loaded me up, took me all the way to Kansas. To a shop in the middle of nowhere, I still can't. And then, and another guy, the owner, changed the tire. So I had to drive back for thirty about I don't know an hour, let's say less than an hour, to get back to Oklahoma, where I started from. Come here, jump over here, jump. You can do it. Or go the other way. Anyway. The drive was beautiful. I made it home in about, I don't know, 20 hours. I, I drove solid and straight through. Uh, the night before I left, I only got 18 minutes worth of sleep because that's what my watch said, and I don't know what happened to it. Uh, uh, I've been in the process of click, I've been home for a day or so. I appreciated everybody. I read everybody's comment. I'm just uh, too exhausted to respond to him. Now, rest it up a little bit. He's going to jump over here. I know he is. Why don't you go across the table and around? He said, no, it's that much work, I guess. Uh, so, uh, I hadn't had any sleep for a couple of days. Always going to go down. But I've been making up for it. I've slept for two, a day and a half, two days since I've been home. Uh, I had a great time up there in Colorado, except for my oxygen level was too way too low. I, the last night I stayed there, it dropped in the 70s, low 70s. It dropped actually at one time at 70. Then I had oxygen, I'd bring it back up and it'd drop back down and bring it back up. I had canisters of oxygen. So I decided to leave and come home before I died of a lack of oxygen. Uh, as soon as I got down to the plains, the national grasslands of Oklahoma and Colorado, my oxygen level got up to about 94. So that was in good shape. I tell you what it is this morning, but if Mark's machine's in the truck, I'm going to, I've got to change it. I, I couldn't find fuel, so I run real low and messed up the fuel filter. i got to have it change the fuel filter. I'm going to buy two brand new tires, heavy duties. I want 16 plies. Forget 12s, I want 16s. At least 14s. And I ain't buying them at the same place anymore either. I think his tars is crap. I blew one out going to court side, blew the other one back coming from the lead field. So there goes the end of his tars. They didn't last long at all. Uh, let's see. 
Also go buy me a clamshell tent instead of that other conventional tent. I want a clamshell, easy, quick to put up. And I'm gonna unload the hamlets to take about half of it out, make it a little bit lighter. Uh, it's probably overweighted, overloaded anyway. Uh, they rent my bicycle, load me up on that car carrier, and unload me. He's crushed my bicycle. I'm gonna call the insurance company this morning. Mm. I thought it'd been easier to bring the wrench to take the lug nuts off and the jack to me versus the other way around. I think they just want to charge the insurance company. Uh, I'm exhausted. I depleted every oxygen cell in my whole body and now it took a couple of days to get them to start getting back because I had such a severe headache. I felt like I was going to pass out. While I was up there, there was a guy in the Safeway store, an elderly gentleman, he was hanging on to his cart and he passed out and his heart uh, uh, stopped. They had to give him CPR. I don't know where he made it or not because of the lack of oxygen. They sold canisters of oxygen. I bought a couple of them. That's probably what kept me alive so I was up there. Even the healthy people, young people, they had trouble breathing for a couple of days to so acclimate it in. I never did acclimate that good. I have a small airway because of the throat cancer I had once upon a time. And uh, that's big as your finger, little finger. Uh, but I had a great time. I should have took more pictures and stuff. But, uh, I'm going to get my rig worked on and I'm gone again. Everything worked great though. My air conditioner worked great. It kept at about 70 degrees back there in the back for the pups. They had a hell of a time. Or he had a little guy rode in the front, but they were scared to death. And that guy wouldn't slow down. He, he had my rig up in the air driving 75 mile an hour. He said, well, that's the speed limit. I said, you're going way too damn fast. And my shit up, on, in, up in the sky. So my dogs are back there. Uh, anyway, I made it home in one piece, survived. I've got to get, I noticed one of my high beam, low beams, uh, headlights is out. I've got to get that trap replaced. Uh, tore the chrome off a wall one side. Uh, I gotta get figure out what I'm gonna do about that, and then uh, let's see. I want two brand new tires in the back for sure, for sure, for sure. Uh, I want heavy duties, airplane tires, something to put some weight on. And I'm gonna take some of the weight off of the rig, but the ambulance itself weighs a ton. This empty would weigh a ton. Uh, well, uh, all he, that guy's tar is separated from the from the tread, so I, I don't know what the hell he was selling me. Recaps, I think. He's paying five hundred dollars a tar for him. They should have been better tars than that. Uh, I said, "Be gonna give a damn anyway." And my friend, she's still up there, and. Her, Two other guys, a woman and a man, and a friend's up there. Another guy, he's up there. They're enjoying themselves in that 39 degree mornings. We were right at the tree line, about 11,000 feet. The town's 10,000, a couple of hundred or something like that, but we were up north of it, higher up than they were. We were up at the tree line, something park or something 
right at the top of the tree line. And I'll tell you what, we're not getting as much water and snow and ice, so the Colorado River lab will go dry. That'll, Lake Mead's already dry pretty well. And Los Angeles been dying of thirst. Uh, as I'll guarantee you, in Colorado, it's not they're not getting the snow and the uh, and the water content. It did rain a little bit up while we was up there, but not like it usually does. They said. I mean, some creeks were completely dry well, from the runoff. That was unusual. So we're running out of water. So uh, I'm gonna go to the doctor since I get a chance to make it enough. I'm supposed to go to the 12th anyway, or the 15th or something. I'm gonna see if I can get in early. Uh, I've been doing real good though. My chest started hurting the last night I was up there, so I figured it was time to get out. And I decided it was time to run. <laughs> oh, this is what I got here. I drove for ever. I tried to make it. I made it all the way up to Saladia, Salida, wherever it was, about a hundred miles from Leadville when I went up there. And so I was trying to make it all the way home because I had the dogs and the pups and had that flat. I would have made it a hell of a lot earlier if I hadn't had it flat. And I blame that on the guy that sold me the tars. Oh yeah, when I blew out the tar coming back from courtside, he knocked a hundred and some odd dollars off for, because of roadside, whatever, blah, 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 or hazard or whatever. And I said, I, you know, I didn't give a shit. What I was mad about is the damn thing blowing out to begin with. Because I said, I can't change a damn tar, I'm too damn old. And I have a jack, a 20 ton, that the guy tried to use this time. The guy, the other guy used my jack to jack it up. This guy here, he, uh, I don't think he knew what the hell he was doing. Scared the hell out of me. And then, when I called roadside assistance, I got a hold of a lady that had about 27,000 kids, and uh, you couldn't hear what she was saying. And I kept trying to tell her where I was, exactly I was at. She said, well, you must be making a lot of noise uh, where you're at, because I, you know, Cause I kept com I kept complaining about the noise on from her side from on that end. She kept turning it around like I was making noise. I said, "Lady, I'm in the middle of the damn national grasslands, and they ain't a car, they ain't a coyote, they ain't nothing within a thousand miles of me. How in the hell could I be making noise? Sound like a bunch of little kids playing and having. Of course, it was hers, but she just didn't want to admit it." So she called me back and I still could hear her kids. I thought to myself, well, they must, she must be sitting on the couch watching Netflix and trying to answer the phone, trying to run a business. She had no clue where I was at. Finally, the record guy called and I explained exactly where I was at. I was in the stuck in the middle of a damn road on four, 412. State Highway, uh, and I could see uh, Junction uh, 176 or something like that. It's crazy. 
I finally crippled it off about, I don't know, a couple hundred yards to a driveway and pulled it into that driveway to keep it off the road a little bit. I didn't want no, that if anything did come by, I didn't want it to run over me. But I'm home, I'm safe. The dog pups were fine. They scared to death. I kept telling that tow truck driver to slow down. He had me up in the air at 75 mile an hour. I said, I told him, I said, anything happens to my dogs, I'll sue your ass off. <laughs> I meant it too. Uh, he could have slowed down. To, he was trying to make more runs that night or whatever the hell he was. It scared the hell out of me. 75 mile an hour, that's ridiculous. I don't drive that fast anyway. And surely don't drive my Miami stuck up 20 foot off the ground doing 75 mile an hour and my four little puppies inside. I had the uh, baby girl and and big boy in the very back because they tried to bite him. And then little guy and then Ori was in the uh, passenger seat uh, on their blankets. Look at that. I bet they were scared to death. I should have took Ori in my lap, but I didn't. But anyway, I made it home safe and alive. I'm going to research some damn good. I know one place that I buy my batteries for my solar and my wheelchairs and stuff, and he does sell them. I've dealt with him for 20 years. He does now start selling tires. I'm going to give him a call this morning and see what he's got. He normally sells batteries, but he's an honest man. I'll tell him I want some heavy duties. If I have to wait a week to get them, I don't care. Uh, and I want something to last versus a, I don't know, 900 miles, 1,000 miles. Uh, both tars, first one tar didn't last 1,000 miles. The other tar lasted about, I don't know, maybe 2,000 miles. But a 10,000 mile guarantee ain't worth a shit. I would... I wouldn't go back over there if they give me two but new tires. Mm. Cause to me, they ain't worth being stranded beside the road. I gotta find a place to change my fuel filter now, <laughs> since I've run low on fuel and sucked up dirt or something in my fuel filter. I made it all the way back from Colorado. I put $48 worth in. Couldn't find it until the station was open because it was in the middle of the night. Drove all the way to Guymon. I was past Guymon. I got fuel again at Woodward. It cost 75 bucks to fill up. So from 75 and, and 48, that's how much money it cost me to get my butt home. It was uh, 25, 125 dollars, something like that, 130, something like that. <coughs> uh, like auction, I can't add this morning too good. But I tell you what, if you if you if you're healthy and uh, your oxygen levels up. You don't have. You're not a smoker. That is a great place. To, I don't smoke, but uh, I've had oxygen trouble. But that's a great place to go. It's beautiful up there in Colorado, Leadville. Uh, me and uh, I want to say Carol and 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 get, uh, Carol and what the hell? I can't even remember that now. Uh, Frida, Carol and Frida, we went out to lunch. We walked one side of Leadville, the old part, and the other side of the old part. We had, uh, Carol's a psychiatrist, and uh, she uh, 
she treated us to lunch if we'd come to, she came up from Salinas, a lot of came from Moonland. About a hundred miles she came up to learn to spend the day with us. Run around. Everybody was collecting over there at the park. So she uh, she showed up and took me and Frida out to lunch. She's Frida's friend for a long time. And uh, we had, uh, I had a big sandwich that I brought off, walked off the left, and chicken wings. I had my chicken wings. I was going to save my sandwich for later on that night and didn't get a chance to eat it. But anyway, then the next time we went out to eat, I bought pizza. It's my treat. I bought pizza. Mm. Uh, it was delicious pizza. They make, they they had some of the best chefs up there. I don't know where the hell they come from, but they're damn good chefs. And uh, the pizza was like, pizza and the drinks was forty five dollars for two of us. Mm. Uh, we had I had a uh, diet coke. Uh, and uh, I think she had a lemon tea or something like that. I got choked on the pepperoni, I remember that. Uh, I don't like pepperoni that much. It was called the all-meat pizza, that's what it was. Should have ordered a combination. But anyway, it was good. I'm going to get out there this morning and I'm going to straighten up. My ambulance, because I just stowed everything back in there. Uh, I was so damn pissed off. I was a little mad at the driver because he was going too fast. Oh, yeah, when they put my spare tar on there, uh, he put the hubcap on, and then I drove off. The hubcap fell off, so I had to go back to the, his shop and pick up the hubcap again. That's, it was just a damn nightmare. I was so glad to get the hell out of, out of damn Kansas back to Oklahoma and back to where I started from so I could get back home. Then the dogs, we just came in and just crashed. Mm. In fact, my little uh, battery-operated refrigerator is hooked up to electricity and it's sitting in the kitchen floor. I hadn't even unloaded it. I just plugged it in. I think I'll either find out today or tomorrow to go get tires. Find out where I can get that fuel filter changed and uh, change that headlight. That's the three things I got to do and then figure out what I'm going to do the side. Uh, where it knocked off all that chrome. I think you can buy another chrome strip and stick along there. I think that's what I might do. I'm thinking about putting something on there uh, that could be useful. Hmm. Could put, since it's long, about 20, 30 foot, I could put a strip across there, put turnbuckles on it or something and use it for something else. I'll do something. Make it look halfway decent. My main theory is a headlight, a fuel filter, and two brand new heavy duty tires. Oh. That's what I really want. That's the tar is the first thing, and the fuel filter be the second, and the headlight. I got uh, on high beams. I got both both lights. On low beams, I only got the one side. Uh, I'm, and another thing, I ain't gonna drive at night no more. Hell with it. I'll find you. Uh, Roads RV park or something. I like driving at night. And first and last thing before I get off here, I apologize for not answering everybody's uh, comments. I did read them. I did like them. 
I just didn't have the time or the energy, mainly the energy, to, to respond to them. Now that I'm home, I got the time and the energy after getting auctioned back, I'll start responding to them. My, my regular people that make the comments, I really appreciate them. You guys were uplifting, let me tell you. Uh, Gail and Carol and and the rest of you. Uh, appreciated you, everyone. Uh, well, I better go. I've got the it's ten minutes to seven. I want to get out there and turn that air conditioner on before it starts getting hot, so I can sit in there and straighten it up. Because I'm used to cooler weather now. No oxygen, but just cooler weather. But if you ever get a chance, go to Leadville. You're two miles high. Denver's one mile high. Leadville's two miles high. Leadville's the top, highest town or city or whatever you want to call it in America. And you were up there. And then if you go on up to the campgrounds, which is another seven or eight hundred feet above Leadville, uh, you're up about 11,000 feet. And you have a little trouble breathing. <laughs> Even if you're healthy. There were some young people of our them hikers, world hikers, and the bikers that the they was having trouble breathing. Talk to you guys later.